All right, good evening, everyone. Welcome to the King Solomon Baptist Church Wednesday night Bible study. I'm Pastor Charles D. Carradine, Jr. I got my good friend with me tonight, Pastor Donald Howard of the Place of Harvest Church in Little Rock, Arkansas. We're going to be sharing with you tonight, talking about growing your vision uh, that you got from God, okay? So let's have a quick word of prayer. Father in heaven, we thank you for this another day. This is the day that you have made, and we shall rejoice and be glad in it. We thank you for your mercy. We thank you for your grace, and we pray you open up the ears of the hearers that they might hear a word from God on tonight. In Jesus' name we pray, and everybody said amen. Amen. Out there in Facebook land, put your hands together for Pastor Donald Howard, the pastor of the Place of Harvest Church in Little Rock, Arkansas. We got about two people in here. They putting their hands together. So I hope you all are putting your hands together too. So say hello to everybody. Praise the Lord to everybody. I just want to say praise the Lord. It's good to be here, Pastor. Amen. So we brought him over tonight to talk about vision because this young man here, I'm going to give a, a really short version because I know we only got 30 minutes. This young man here, uh, about, mm, I guess about 13, 14 years ago, we used to work together and he uh, communicated to me the Lord had place in his heart to, to start a church, a ministry in Little Rock, amen, and to, just to cut across the field, so to speak, he started his church with just a few people, they were in a storefront, and now they got this big old mega church, <laughs> it's just short of a mega church over there in Little Rock, they just got a brand new facility, and you know, he took the vision that God gave him, and, and he ran with it, amen, and so that's what that's why we got him here, because I bet you he got something he can share with you about getting a vision from God and running with it. And we know that Proverbs 29 and 18 said, where there is no vision, people perish. So if you don't have a vision from God, I promise you that's a big reason why you're struggling in life. That's right, Pastor. That's right, Pastor. That's all you're going to say. Is that right, Pastor? <laughs> so that's all he's going to say is that's right, Pastor. So, so uh, t give us, just tell us a little bit about uh, in the beginning when God planted the seed of this ministry in your heart. Right, right. You remember, uh, Pastor Caradine, that uh, you was just in the transition. I think you had just got this church, and uh, ah, right, 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 and right. I was telling you, I said, God had placed the vision in me to start a, a ministry, start a church. Mm -hmm. And it was actually you who told me to, why don't you just start a Bible class? And so That's you right. Start a Bible I remember them class. conversations. And, That's and, right. And, and I was like, yeah, I never thought about that. You know, just mm -hmm. start a Bible class and allow it to grow from there mm -hmm. and so that's that's what we did we started matter of fact we didn't we didn't start in a storefront we started in that old abandoned that's, house that's right that's right <laughs> he, he started in an abandoned house and you know i think it was zachariah or zephaniah said don't despise the day of small beginnings amen absolutely so you know we started in an old abandoned house and mm -hmm. think about i think I, I was so happy i created flyers for the first <laughs> yeah he, he for created first flyers <laughs> for the abandoned house bible study <laughs> for the first bible study <laughs> go ahead I'm, and i remember i remember it remembers like it was yesterday we, we was mopping those floor because the floor was so dirty and okay. dusty that we still couldn't get all the dust off the floor <laughs> we <put out> about <laughs> okay we put out about 10 chairs and i think about all about Four people showed up. Okay, uh, my okay. wife, my mother. Okay. And, and maybe I think it was two members from Dreamland. Okay, so, so your mama was there. <laughs> yeah. So he had his wife, and he had four people. He had his wife, his mama, and then two other folks that he supervised at work. Okay, go ahead. And so, <laughs> and so eventually, um, uh, kept doing it week after week. We was faithful about uh -huh. it. And, you know, God had already given me the gift to teach. Okay, so that's I, right. I knew that's I right. had the gift yeah, to you, teach. Yeah, he's a good teacher now. And so... Uh, it kept growing. It kept growing. And uh -huh. so eventually the room. So let me, let me, let me, I don't, I, so in the beginning, the only thing you had was a word from God. I, they need to, people need to know that. Absolutely. That's, that, I had a word from God in my heart. Because we were good. I was assistant pastor at the Acts um, mm -hmm. Ministries. And, right. and, and we didn't have to go into anywhere. We were satisfied where we were. Right. As a matter of fact, it, it wasn't my real vision to get my own church at first. Right. Because we was comfortable. We were satisfied. That's right. We had, I don't know, we, was, we had it going on at Acts. That's right. But then when God kept pushing me and pushing me, I kept dreaming about this. And actually, it was me and the first lady. When we got into, I told her about the vision mm -hmm. to start the church, and she was comfortable. She didn't want to leave Acts. And, right. and so um, we got in the closet. I remember that night, and we, we began to pray. I said, come in the closet. I said, we need to pray together. Okay. And, and when, we, when we touched and agreed, uh -huh. she seen the same vision okay, so y'all saw the same that thing? I seen. Okay, good. And she came out the closet crying and said, we got to start this ministry. Okay, good. And so he, he got 
the, a word from God. So if you're trying to do anything in life, remember that. The first thing you need is a word from God. So if you're doing something and God didn't give you a word to do it, stop it right now. Wait a minute, pay the bills off on it. Stop it right now and go back and get a word from God. Amen. Absolutely. It's, it's kind of like uh, uh, Peter heard this preacher say, uh, don't, don't do anything without asking God. Just like okay. Peter, Peter wouldn't come out into the deep until he asked God, can I come? Can I come? That's right. Can That's I come? Right. So we don't, we don't do anything in ministry without asking God. Right. And something else, something else he said was key, and I don't know if you all caught it, but he said he went with his pastor's blessing. So I want you to know he's not some renegade preacher <laughs> that just went out and started a church. He had the blessing of Pastor Stewart. Pastor Stewart is a great man of God. He had the blessing of his pastor. His pastor knew what he was doing, so he wasn't just doing something off the hip. Absolutely. I was assistant pastor there for 15 right. years. That's and, right. And, and so uh, okay. we, was, we was faithful. I Good. believe to be a leader, you have to first be a follower. That's right. Good. And so we were great followers. That's great huge example. in itself. Great to service. be a leader. Listen, to be a leader, you got to first be a follower. So watch this here. What is he saying? He's saying you got to be faithful to somebody else's vision before you God going to give you your own vision. Amen. So stop trying to do stuff in this world on your own, and you haven't even supported somebody else in doing what they do. Because when you're faithful over little, then the Lord knows you'll be faithful over much. So let's, let's keep it. I want to get the whole vision, at least most of it in tonight. So you went from sweeping the dirty floors. <laughs> so we, we, we kind of outgrew, the, outgrew the, uh, the abandoned house. And at that time, uh, because we were faithful, I was able to call Pastor Stewart, Bishop Stewart, uh -huh. and ask him could we, because they own that mini mall over right. there okay, okay. off of John Barrow. Okay. And we was able to do I pick up our Bible class over in the mini mall. Okay, and good. And so we did that for about six months. We okay. did that. He, he blessed us. And we left We left the mini mall at that point, and, and we went to uh, a hotel. Okay. Uh, at the end of I remember hotel. that. I remember that. So that didn't the, last long, though, did it? No, it didn't because didn't they was charging us a uh, hundred some dollars a night for the room, 30, right. uh, for the room, and we was only making $20 in the Bible class. <laughs> 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 so <laughs> that wasn't that. <laughs> and your mama was probably like, I ain't getting that. I'm tired of paying tithes to this hotel. I know. Okay. But, but, but I, I, like, I like that step, though, because now we're getting incremental. So we start off in the dusty house, and now we, we move to the, uh, to the storefront yes. and then to the hotel. So God gave you one step at a time. Absolutely. So, so then, like you said, we didn't move without asking God. Every move we made, we would ask God. Okay, okay. And so uh, God told me, I felt it in my spirit, is around that, that December and of, um, mm -hmm. I want to say, I forget what, I want to say 2013 it was. Okay. And... Uh, we, we, it was time to get out that mini mall. And I said, you know what? We're not going to move anywhere else until we get a building. Until you get a, building, get a church. Right. So we, right, we right. had enough people following us. We that's had enough right. people in Good. the ministry now that we wanted to launch a church. Good. Okay. And so, uh, long story short, I guess about, uh, and I tell you, it was God. The, the place we had over there on John Burrow. Okay. I mean, off of uh, Baseline. Okay. And I went over there. They wanted like about. Man, I want to say about four thousand or something a month for that place, and right. I'm like, that was too much for us. They wanted four thousand a month. Four thousand a month. It was seven thousand square feet. Hang on feet. one second. I've been over there. It's not a four thousand dollar a month building. Go ahead. <laughs> they don't know who I'm talking about, but it ain't it ain't four hundred. It ain't four. It's barely four hundred. But go ahead. <laughs> so, I'm serious. Go ahead. So so so. so. Um, I went around and around. Long story short, we had about three buildings we had looked at. Okay. And we finally settled on one. And it's about half the size of that. But then right when we was going to sign mm -hmm. the contract to get into that building, I, I, that's how I know it's God. Okay. We got a call from the guy that owned that building. Okay, okay. And, and he said, you are you still interested? And I was mm -hmm. like, yeah, we're, we're interested, but we can't pay afford to right. pay what you're asking that's right. for. He said, well, we're just trying to get good people in, make an offer. Mm, make an offer. Now it's make an offer. Uh -huh. See, you know, I'm going to tell you all something. Proverbs 21 and 1 says that the heart of the king is in the hand of the Lord. And the Lord, can, that's it. You knew what I was going to do. The Lord will turn a man's heart to your favor. See, you, 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 so you check, get an education, but watch this here. <laughs> an education can't do for you what the voice of God can do for you. So your education going to tell that man you got a master's, but the voice of God going to tell him you get him the job. Amen. So the, the voice of God moved in y'all behalf. Go ahead. And, and, and so God turned his heart. Okay. God turned his heart. So we was amazed because I was just, I had signed the lease mm -hmm. on this other place, but I, all I had to do was drop it off and we was in this. Right, right. And it, we needed a lot of work, but God knew. 
He knew. Okay. God, God, God knew, and right. so He knew what we needed. Right. And so we That's got right. into baseline, and we stayed over there for. Okay. Um, so God, so God knew that you needed to be there to get you ready for the next step. Exactly, because okay. the, everything connected. Everything connected, to, right. To get, well, let me slow down. That's okay. So, uh, so we was in there for two years, mm -hmm. and, and watch this. You know, we was in there for two years, then we ended up buying the land, the land that's right, right down the street, about that's 10 right. acres. That's right. We so, got, they, so they was in this storefront in southwest Little Rock, and then down the street, it was how many acres? 10 acres. So God time. had grew them to the place where they bought 10 acres right in the middle of the city. Prime time acres, oh, right on the corner, right there, down the street from Long. I know, that's right. And, and, and we were so excited about uh -huh. that. I was, I'm telling you, we was excited about those 10 acres. We was ready to build. We got the plans, mm -hmm. everything. We was ready to go. Uh, yeah, right the vision, plans, right. make it uh -huh. plain. Uh -huh. okay. and, and, and God was dealing with us about that. So we was ready. We was ready to build. Okay. And, and, then, and then COVID hit. Then COVID hit. Right. Okay. Right. COVID, COVID right. hit. Right. And, and so when, 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 when COVID hit, it changed. I just believe, Pastor Caradine, that God will bring a national, worldwide pandemic uh -huh. just so you can follow his plan. That's right. That's to get you where right. he oh, needs yeah. to be. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> Somebody probably said that boy up right. there crazy. So, so, going back to what we were talking about just before you said that piece, so what the Lord was really doing, he was putting everything, in, he was putting everything in place for you all, and it was probably unbeknownst to you all. Because you were going to drop off that lease to that guy that you said, but then you ended up staying with the one on baseline. Am I remember? Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. So God, so God uh, put a bumper there and, and bumped you back into the right place where you need to be. Because chances are we would have got that place where we was trying to get, finna get on Markham. We never would have got the land. Oh, right. That's what, I'm, that's what I'm getting at. Because your, your eyes wouldn't have been on the land. That's right. So this is what I want to share with you all real quick. Quit criticizing where you are. Listen, if the only thing you need to know is that God got you where you are. And if the Lord has you where you are, then quit looking for a way out and start believing God for a way through. Amen. Because where you are is a setup for your next go up. Okay? So quit complaining. Quit criticizing. If you know you where God wants you at, then listen, grow where you at. Where were you at? So, so, now, so now you got the land, you're still in the storefront. What happened next? It, it, it's funny because we paused for a minute when you go said ahead, no, go ahead. That, that grow where you at. I was listening, you know, and I, I was kind of kind of get depressed sometime out there on baseline because, of uh -huh. the, you know, because where you at is where the type of people that you that's right. that you collect. That's right. That's and right and so, we, you know, out on baseline in God Springs, uh -huh. <laughs> uh -huh. right. people get folks homeless just walk up into the that's church. Right. That's right. So, so, but I, I was listening to a pastor preach one time, and he was saying, Grow where you at. Grow where you at. Grow where God right. planted you there for growing right. at. So I, we, you know, anyway, uh -huh. so we got the land. We was happy. Uh, within two years, we, we paid the land off in two years. Mm -hmm. So we now we, we debt free. So now you're, you're in a storefront, got 10 acres of land and debt free. Paid for. Paid 10 for. acres worth of land. Right. Paid for. And you know what? I, and and, everything and this was how long after you opened? This was two years after we opened. After you opened, okay, okay. And then we paid it off in two years. So four years. Four years. So in four years, he went from his him, his wife, his mama, and two of his employees he made come to a raggedy Bible study <laughs> to a, a storefront <laughs> building that they're paying a lease on and 10 acres of land paid for cash, debt free. Ladies and gentlemen, let me tell you something. When God is in your business, you don't have to worry about it. Amen. Go ahead. So, so, so now we have this land. It is it, it's, it's paid off. It's debt free. Mm -hmm. And I'm telling you, and it, it was awesome to have the land paid off because That's right. that, that made a major mark in the ministry, allowing right. the people to know that we're good stewards. Good steward. That's right. That's o -o right. Over this money. And so right. we still are praying, asking God, now what's next? What's next? So then, mm -hmm. as we plan to build, plan to build, mm -hmm. then the pandemic hits. Right. The pandemic okay. hits. So we we're ready to build. We mm -hmm. we finally made our mark. You know how churches have those uh those uh what's that that those thermometer right oh, yeah. capital campaign capital yeah. campaign yeah. Yeah. we 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 just had made the mark. Okay, you know what we're finna get ready. We got enough money that the bank All right. wants us to be at uh -huh. just to build. And then COVID hits, and so we 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 go out and they tell us <laughs> they tell us that uh uh, -huh. uh we for, the prince was like 7000 square feet we was happy with that we was able to get everything okay. we wanted within the prince right but then they come back and say now lumber is so high right so they were going to build a new church 
but but construction costs, like all of you all know, is through the roof right now. Three times high. Three times high, that's right. But so we, we was going to build in phases. We had phase one. Phase one. Phase, phase two. two and then like phase that's three. Right. So uh-huh. we're going to put something pretty on those 10 acres. That's right. But but they told us that at the time that all we can build was, was half a dollar tree. Half? What that mean? <laughs> 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 Half a dollar. You know how Dollar Tree the the, the size of a dollar. Oh, those tree. type of buildings. Yeah. So, so they want they want you to put your church in a Dollar Tree. Half a dollar. Tree. Half. <laughs> Half. Okay. So they so the man uh, we gonna call him the man, <laughs> Mr. Charlie wanted him to put his church. In a half of a Dollar Tree building, and they won't go be able to sell stuff like Dollar Tree. Right. <laughs> okay. Go, okay. okay. I, I, I can't figure that out, but go ahead. So, so the average Dollar Tree runs about seven thousand, seventy-five thousand square feet. Okay. Okay. Uh, okay. We could build with four thousand. Oh, that's too small. Yeah. 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 So, yeah. so, so, so I said, you know, me and the first lady talk went back to the board, mm-hmm. and and we 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 said we want to weigh our options. Okay. So, you, so I want to plug a pin in. So you you have a board yeah. at your church, oh, yeah, exactly. and I think this is important. And I'm not knocking anyone because I know a lot of people who start ministries and start churches and they're trying to grow it, but they don't want a board. And so when when you're trying to start something like that, and because I started, I had a 501c3, you know, a lot of guys want to start ministries and there may be somebody listening at this eventually that's trying to do it. You need a board, okay? You can, it can't be you and your wife handling everybody money. Ain't that right? That's exactly right. It's you yeah. got to have some folks that you're accountable to. That's important. Okay, go ahead. So, so we went to the board, and uh, once we came to the board, we said we want to weigh our options. Right. And so we we said, what do you mean we want to weigh? Our, we want to we want to look uh, right. explore outside That's of right. building. Maybe there's some churches around. That's right. And so that was a whole nother process. Right. I remember our mind set and our vision mm-hmm. was on board. I said, well, before we do anything, let's pray. Let's see what, let's see what right. God that's right. has to say. Again, before right. we make any move, we, we want to make sure that's what God that's wants right. us to do. That's right. Because really, at this point, you was like at the Red Sea. You, you, didn't, you couldn't go back. No. You couldn't go forward. No, sir. And you couldn't go left or right. That's right. But you still had a vision. Still had a vision. Go ahead. And I and I knew and I knew God was gonna do something. Right. That's I, it. I, I knew God was gonna mm-hmm. do something. So as we're looking for the because remind you, it, it had never dawned on me to look for build to that's look right. for a building. Right. That's My, right. Because because I, I, I remember talking to you. Only thing you talked about was building this building because you had the land. I, our mind. We yes right. That's right. We, our mind okay. was set. That's right. On building this building. That's right. We had the prints. That's everything. right. We was ready to go. That's right. And but when COVID hit, let's say the, the wood t- lumber went through the roof, mm-hmm. and so we said, "What's where our options?" So we began to look for uh, other buildings other around buildings. the church, and it that's was right. a different experience because when you when you change mindsets, yeah, that's, yeah, yeah, you, you know, you right. have to allow God to to lead you. That's right. That's and that's and right. you know because we didn't want to just jump into some any old raggedy right building. That's right. So you had to be careful about that's that. Right. So we we want so now you now you're looking for existing structures. Yes. Okay. Good existing good, structures. <laughs> good existing. Okay. Because we already had expectations. That's it's like right. buying That's a right. house. That's right. You know you you don't once you don't bought once you mm-hmm. don't bought one your, okay. your starter house you know. What not what to the, buy. That's right. What not to. <laughs> that's right. How many of y'all ever bought two houses before? Remember that f- some of us we that first house we got once we got in there we found out it was a death trap. So when we went to get the second house. We like okay. Let's uh, we know what to look for now. So now you're looking for this building. Go ahead. And so I mean, this is a process. We're not going to rush this process because okay. we had a, just like looking for a house. We had checklists. Right. Okay. What we what we what, what we had to have mm-hmm. in this building. Gotcha. Okay. And, and so now remind we still got the land. Right. That's paid for. Okay. So so we we you know we don't feel rushed at that's this right. time. Okay. Um. So uh, we, I think we spent a whole year mm-hmm. just looking at. Right. Because you're in the pandemic anyway. Right, absolutely. So you're absolutely. in the pandemic. So let me ask you a question. So in the pandemic, were y'all having church in the building still? We, you know, it, it's amazing. We we was having church in the building, but like this setup here, we only had a media crew. Okay, okay. And, and it was just us and a praise team. Okay, right, and, and, okay. And, 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 and you know what's amazing about that, mm-hmm. Pastor Paradigm, right. is it was kind of like Joseph, uh, mm-hmm. how – uh, in Egypt, uh-huh. how how the Bible says that they prospered. That's right. In the famine. That's right. That's exactly right. Because even though we had met the benchmark 
to to build where we are, That's we, right. to, to get in this existing building, That's right. we had to reach another benchmark. That's right. And so in the midst of a pandemic, That's right. uh -huh. we were still climbing That's right. to this benchmark. That's good. That's good. So God, I mean, it was, and it was just, you just see the hand That's of right. God. Just, just, just moving on. Yeah. The, on them. It just, it was just hovering over the mm -hmm. ministry. That's right. I, and you know, and you know, I believe God's been doing that for most churches. Uh, you know, one of the best things you said it with Joseph. One of the best things you can do in a season like this, or any dry season, is keep doing the last thing God told you to do. You know, don't, don't quit and give up just because things in the world have changed. Because uh, Psalms one nineteen eighty nine says that God's word is forever settled in heaven. And so God doesn't change. So if you're in a bad place and you got a vision, don't stop doing what you're doing until God tell you to change. So you kept having church and you kept moving forward. So tell us about how you got to where you are. Okay. And so, so, so we didn't, we didn't panic. And so mm -hmm. once we got to the building, once we, once we, he, our, 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 our realtors took us around, took us around. First mm -hmm. lady was the one that was spearheading. Right. You okay. Know? So I let the lady, the lady okay. kind of right, get right. eyesight for what we want. Okay. So when we, when we seen that we finally got the building, can't, timing is everything. Okay. Can't That's right. God's timing. Okay. Was everything. God's timing. And so we, um, um, when this building came available, mm -hmm. um, uh, we it was like we were the first first lady seen it, and she jumped on it. Oh, okay, good. And, and, and when we went to see it, you know, she was saying, Can, let's go see this building. And they wanted a million dollars for okay. this building. So they, they wanted, wanted a million dollars for this million building. A million dollars. And, and I didn't have no offering to give him. <laughs> I think I had about $100. Nobody had an offering you, you to give us You take this $100 anything. and go do what you can fit, work it out, you know. Nobody okay. had an offering. Okay. And, and so, so, so. Um, we, we were in a good place financially, but we weren't ready for the million. I said, right. so, so I told First Lady, I said, mm -hmm. that why, why are we wasting our time going to look at this building? Right, okay. And, and she, she convinced me. She said, just promise me you're going to look at it. Right, okay. And so um, I, we, we, went, we went, I kept my word. We went and looked at it, mm -hmm. and the rest is, we, we got what we got him through. And Mayor Daly was the representative for mm -hmm. United Plastic Methodist, and he said, um, um, I like this. He said, "Let's we can make this work." And then the first okay. lady asked Mayor Daly. He I was he was your realtor. He was the realtor for. He was realtor for, for them for, for them for that church. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Mr. Shelton, Troy Shelton was our realtor. Okay. And, and so the first lady at, uh, came back to Mayor Daly and said, "Well, y'all, how stuck are y'all on this right. price? This million dollars." Right. And so there it was. You see, God's mm -hmm. hand move again. Okay. And okay. so he he he, he paused mm -hmm. because he told us. He said he said the building was worth. Two million. Right, right, right. So he was going. He was thinking, if yeah. thing, we going yeah. up. Yeah, I've down. seen. I've seen it. It's 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 something. And and, and, and so, mm -hmm. and I looked at the building. I, I wasn't. I wouldn't have been mad at him right. if he told him he, he not budging. Right, right. I got you. And and so he said, I, I seen God take his lips and say, make an offer. Make an <laughs> offer. Yeah. <laughs> he, he, he he said. God told him yeah, to say, uh, make yeah. an offer. Make an offer. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And, and and the rest is history. Rest so now, so let so because we run out of time. So, so you went from eight, nine years ago from being in a dusty house <laughs> with yourself, your wife, my mama. your mama, because you know your mama going to support you as long as you're doing something halfway decent. Your mama and then two employees that you made come over and go to your <laughs> church. I was gonna so you went from that, sweeping the flows and all of that. So just give us some of the, 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 the uh, what this new building has in it real quick. This new building, it, it's more than a dream. It, it has a... Uh, uh, um, a fellowship hall that's that's second to none. I, I would put the sanctuary up against anybody's sanctuary. Okay. Yeah, how, many, how many people does the sanctuary sit? It's, it, 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 uh, for the pew size, it holds 380. So 380. It's okay. So, so from a four-room uh, shack to a sanctuary that holds 380 people. 21,000 square feet. 21,000 square feet. It has feet a kitchen facility. in it, full-fledged kitchen. kitchen full-fledged kitchen. A daycare that's ready to go a tomorrow. A daycare that, they, that they're trying to get up and running that's going to service uh, the middle of the city and the southwest Little Rock area, maybe maybe a little bit out to the west. And, and let me just say mm -hmm. this, that the Fellowship Hall is mm -hmm. the actual voting site for that whole district. Oh, they vote there. Yeah, for that district. Okay, that, okay, so you're going to be a, a polling station, yes. too. Okay, uh, and a, a big old parking lot. Oh, uh, man, amazing. Yeah, handi everything's handicapped, accessible. They got an ele elevator in there. Oh, yeah, and that works. That works, that, yeah, because I, was, I wasn't going to get on the elevator. <laughs> I saw it, but I said, I ain't getting that thing. But anyway, <laughs> but it works. And they left. Okay. Everything. They left everything. We yeah. didn't need for I nothing. Know. We That's put right. all our stuff in storage. Right. Okay. 
Yeah, they got some robes from back in the 60s. <laughs> so any of you brothers out there need some robes from the 60s, call him. If you need some hymn books, they got some, yeah, they got come, some come see books. me. Yeah, they got some old hymn books, <laughs> robes, all that stuff. They got about, how many pianos left over there? Three. They got three pianos over there. So anybody need a piano around town, call them. They got one they can give you. And it works good. All the pianos in great shirt, That's great right. shape. Good. So listen, uh, so as we get ready to go, just give us a, just a quick nugget on, on, on God giving us a vision for our life and, what, and how should we handle it? What should we do? You know. My advice to, to those listening with God's vision is, is to stay in tune because a vision is not what you see, hmm. but it's what God shows you in your heart. Hmm. And you have to be in, tone, in right. tune with God to see the vision that he has just for you. Just for you. So your heart has to be, your spirit man has to be tuned into the Lord. And your, the vision that God has for you, it's for you. That's right. And so we always sing that song, what God has for me, it is for me. And I know Miami Mass Choir did a great job of singing that. But watch this here. I think a lot of times we get that twisted with just being material things. And there's nothing wrong with material things, but you said something key. It is what he places in your heart. Amen. That's really relevant to your life. Amen. So I know it, y'all, he can't hear y'all, but put your hands together for Pastor Donald Howard, the place of Harvest Church in Little Rock, Arkansas. What's the address? Uh, th the address is 6401 West 32nd Street, Little Rock, Arkansas. 6401 West 32nd Street, Little Rock, Arkansas. Make sure y'all delete that when we get off. <laughs> I don't want King Solomon folks leaving here and going over there. I say, this dynamic preacher, they'll be leaving. Uh, but anyway, go see him. Amen. If you're out there and you don't have a church home, maybe you're not tuned in now, maybe you listen later, and you're in the central Arkansas area, particularly over in Little Rock, Midtown, so to speak, and you're looking for a church home, great place to go. Great pastor. One of our great friends, I'm not going to say his name, played, he's an Arkansas Razorback. He just <laughs> went over there and became a partner, a member of his church, and they're, they're, just, they're just growing. And so uh, we thank God for you. Thank God. Thank God for having me, and uh, it's a pleasure to be here. Amen. It's a pleasure to have you. Listen, we're getting ready to go. I do want to share with all of you all that don't forget that this Saturday we will be uh, funeralizing our beloved sister Lois Jean Clemens at 1 o'clock uh, here at the church. So we pray that, first of all, that you will continue to pray for Jody and the family. And uh, they're going to they're gonna, they're gonna be here at 12, so you'll be able to come in at 12 o'clock. Uh, and view, but the funeral will be at 1 o'clock. We do have a, a seating limit on how many people can come in. Uh, so preference, of course, course is going to go to the family and those that are part of the program. But continue to pray for Jody and the family and uh, continue to lift them up in prayer. Then on next Wednesday, we'll be funeralizing uh, our sister Gussie Chalk. Amen. Uh, she passed away also on last Friday. So her funeral will be here next Wednesday the 18th. Uh, at 10 a.m., amen, we'll be here uh, with that service. And then on this coming Friday, we'll be funeralizing the mother of our member, Sister Stephanie uh, Russell. You know, uh, I don't know if I even told you, we've had uh, four funerals here in this past two-week period. So continue to pray for them families and lift them up. Continue to pray for the church. Let me say thank you to all of our members and friends uh, for being not just tuning in on Facebook or what have you and t YouTube, but for continually supporting the church with your tithes and offerings. Listen, we couldn't do what we do uh, without people who support uh, the churches financially. Isn't that right? Absolutely. Yeah. absolutely. So, so we thank you for what you're doing. And uh, we have deacons and trustees and, and our, our finance team. They're good stewards of what was, what's entrusted to us. So thank you for your support. And uh, I guess we're getting ready to go. I will see you all on this Sunday morning at 10 a.m. Facebook Live right here on this station. Or if you want to come in here, come on in here. We masked up, social distancing, checking temperatures, uh, using hand sanitizer. You know, ministry just something else now. Hey, Pastor, before you go, I just no, want to ahead. say, I, I know King Solomon knows this, but y'all have an outstanding pastor. He's my big brother in the gospel. I really name? look up to him. Pastor Charles <laughs> Boy, you Kerr. Hey, y'all give him a round of applause. <laughs> yeah, yeah, thank you. But one person, I got a round of applause. <laughs> yeah, I grew up with this dude in the south end of Little Rock. 
So we, we kind of been knowing each other for a long time. And he, he was a great football player. He could, probably could have played college ball, but he fell in love with that woman sitting over there. <laughs> and you know how it is. He fell in love, started working at Bennigan's, a Red Lobster, one of these places, got a car. And that joker wasn't no good ever since. So anyway, we thank God for him being with us. Listen, we walk by faith and not by sight. God bless y'all this night and always.